Leia Newberger, Roy Newberger in studio. The book is called Working Toward Mashiach, if my information is correct. The book will be released this week by Feldheim. That's a, that's what we hope that's what we're assume, supposed to be. I assume it's going to be available on your website. I have to assume it right? is already available on our website. Twenty twenty vision. Those are numbers, not words. Twenty twenty vision. Co. Il. Look at the website. You'll find it inspiring. The brand new book is uh, done in uh, in partial order. This is the time of year to promote a book that has partial order because obviously we're going to be starting from scratch. Yeah. In the next few weeks, yes. and uh, there are a lot of things we'll talk about the cover, and there are a lot of things in general. But I didn't, you know, it, this week is Parshas Kisavo. It's Parshas Kisavo. We're going to read it this coming Shabbos. It's page three hundred and eighty-seven. Thank you. Yeah, in the Newberger volume, it's page three eighty-seven. That's how we refer to it now. In high school, many years and many lifestyles ago, I was manager of the junior varsity basketball team. You remember writing this? I Our coach do. was a student. I, I remember doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Our coach was a student from a nearby college who inspired us with a great proverb. When you think you're green, you're growing. When you think you are ripe, you're rotten. <laughs> what does that mean? Is that beautiful? Oh, it's my gosh. That you it's, even remember it. It's a universe of wisdom in, in those from a basketball coach. For those of you who wonder if you should yeah. listen to your mentors who are not necessarily rabbis, there's a lot you can learn not from Jewish. people. Rabbis. Not, not Jewish. He was, there are a lot you can learn from people. This is what you were saying a few minutes ago, Nachan, the question you asked. Right, about respect for other the, religions, the, right? He, the, he was going to a Catholic college. He was going to Manhattan College in, 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 in Riverdale. In, in Riverdale. And, and um, what it means is this, and it's, and it's so beautiful for the month of Elul, the days before Rosh Hashanah, because what it mean, when you think you're ripe, when you think you're green, you're growing. When you think you're ripe, you're rotten. It means when you think, you know, you're a, a nothing. Look at the Psalms. Look at King David. He's always saying, I'm a nothing, I'm a nothing, I'm a nothing. And a person who says, I'm a nothing, and who, who doesn't give up on himself, then that gives, leaves the opening for God to come up and may, uh, come in to his life and make him a something, which is what happened with King David. Right. So, but if you think you're ripe, if you think you're, you made it and you're great. You're king of the world. Then you are about to, you know, it like. The, it's over. It's, o- it's, all o- it's all over. You, you can't grow because you don't think you need to grow. In this passage about Kisavo, this week's Parsha, you write that your wife and yourself did hiking recently. You went hiking on Storm King Mountain in the Mid-Hudson Valley. Yes. And you learned a lesson based on this parable that your coach taught you just by looking at the forestry that you're walking through on this hike. Yeah. What does that mean? What did you learn? I have to, uh, I have to read the page, but, <laughs> but there, are, there are pictures. I told you not. Well, you, you expect me to let, remember let, my book? Let me remind you. You spoke about how fascinated you were by which trees were oh. growing and which were dropping, which were wilting, it, which were rotting away. And the lesson you learned that's perfect for this time of year yeah. is an extension of that proverb that you were taught. We have pi- the book is illustrated with pi- I, right. these, I took these pictures. Right. Thank you for reminding me, Nachem. <laughs> I should remember these my These are book. articles for six, year, six <laughs> years right, of right. every Trust week me. in the Yatet. Trust me, so I'm not blaming you. We should mention that. We should mention that. Of one of them. Right. <laughs> I, I, no, I, that's, I didn't expect you to remember every detail. <laughs> I'm just, ah, okay. I'm here, Listen, I'm, I'm a human being. And then if you look at page 390, and it's your luck that we're here in Kisavo this week. You know, if we were at Parshas Lechacha, we'd be talking about Israel. I assume. You know, I don't know what you wrote on Lechacha. I don't remember from, the, from over the weekend. <laughs> but, but I will tell you that you talk about the Tochacha, and you make a point in the Tocha, which is the, the great chapter of rebuke, the chapter that we read quickly so that we don't focus on it in synagogue. That's how fearful we are of it. And you make the point, did you ever, do you ever feel that you literally can't bear to see what's going on in the world? And then down the road, there's something even more unbearable, and it goes on and on. You see one thing, and you see another. You, we seem to be going down, 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 approaching the 49th level of spiritual impurity to which the Jewish people descended in Egypt. Then you ask, why the double expression, the sight of your eyes that you will see? And you suggest that we'll be lulled by our evil cl- inclination to think that the sight of your eyes is theoretical or something that happened years ago or for a different generation. The Torah says, no, it's something you actually can see. And if you didn't believe it before, you'll be forced to believe it because you're going to see it with your own eyes. What a perspective about how Torah, which so many people consider ancient oh. and a guideline for generations ago, is perfect for 2015. 
it's, it's, it's more than perfect. It's so needed. And that's actually what this book is about. That's, I mean, that was my idea behind writing it, um, working toward Mashiach. Um, first of all, I, I want to tell you about the, the Tochach, a, a very interesting this, this week's Torah portion, right. that, that the fact that we see it all happening before our eyes, playing out in, in, in our own lifetime, in our own world, also makes us realize that God knew this was going to happen, and it gives us hope. The Tochach has so much hope in it because— You don't see the negative. You concentrate more on the positive of the Tochach. Be, be, because when you see it all coming to pass, you see, oh, Very God. similar to Rabbi Akiva, right? Yeah. Laughing, yeah. laughing at the prophecy, right? Because God said it was going to happen, and God said after it's going to happen, there's going to be a redemption. Right. And I, 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 actually, one of the points I wanted to make— sure. to, uh, today I had in mind to make today just in line with what you were saying is that that the exodus from Egypt which forms the whole basis of the holiday season Passover begin pass right. the whole theme of Passover the exodus from Egypt we mention it every day in our in, 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 in our prayers the Chafetz Chaim said that the exodus from Egypt is going to be the paradigm for the final redemption of the Jewish people and, 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 you know, this fits in so perfectly with what you were saying because that is, um, uh, it's, it's so easy to think it's just like a, um, um, a story, a fable we read and what does it have to do with it, but it's everything. If we want to understand what's going on in today's world, then we have to understand the script is in the Torah, the whole, all the events of the exodus from Egypt are going to play out at the end of history, which, we're, which is right now. And just the way the exodus from Egypt ended with such the greatest thing that ever happened in history that the Jewish people went with Moses to, to Mount Sinai and received the Torah, that a parallel series of events is going to be at the end of history. And all the troubles that we have in today's world are going to end with such simcha and such greatness and such... And such the way we want the world to be, that, that that's joy. our recipe for getting through today.